Hi guys and welcome to another ESP32 technical tutorial. In this edition we're going to talk about logic analyzers. Now this has got almost nothing to do with the ESP32 specifically and is everything to do with electronics work prototyping in general but uh, I believe that if you're going to do any kind of electronics with the ESP32 if you don't have a logic analyzer you're going to be shooting yourself in the foot sooner or later. Now, logic analyzers come in all shapes and forms. One of the best on the market is the Celea Logic Analyzer. Uh, they make a number of uh, excellent products, about the $100 mark or, or above, and uh, they have some excellent, excellent hardware. However, if your budget won't reach to that, there are also some really good, cheap logic analyzers. This one, for example. Uh, this one is only $6 on eBay. And uh, there's really no reason not to, uh, not to get yourself one of these. And there's plenty of these around from different suppliers. Now, the notion behind a logic analyzer is that as we are running ESP32 electronics applications, those applications are going to be producing usually signals on the GPIO pins. And you can't see a signal. You know, you could maybe attach an LED to it, but if the signal pulses are fractions of a millisecond, you're not going to see that light flicker. So if you're debugging electronics-based puzzles, how do you know what signals are incoming or outgoing through your ESP32? And that's where one of these cheap logic analyzers comes into the, into the picture. Uh, you plug the logic analyzer uh, into uh, a USB and then you attach it to your PC, either Windows or, uh, or Mac. I don't know if there's a Linux version is available. I use Windows. And then the pins up to eight channels then plug into up to eight different pins on your ESP32 plus a common ground. Now once that's done you then download some software and there's various uh, uh, products on the market. Uh, Celea themselves make a one they call uh, Logic, which is uh, what I'm going to demonstrate here. And uh, using these software packages, you can then capture traces over time of the signals on your ESP32 pins. So for example, let me demonstrate that. Here I've got an ESP32 application running, and this application is communicating with a BMP180 integrated circuit uh, using I squared C, I2C. Now I2C is also known as the two-wire bus, uh, which means there's one bus for a clock signal and one bus line for a uh, one data line for both input and output to the device. So two wires, one for the clock, one for the data attach from the ESP32 to my BMP180 device. So I then tap into those lines through my logic analyzer and then bring up the logic analyzer software. And the logic analyzer software looks as follows. So here are my different input channels and I'm only going to use the first two here. And I hit the start button. We're now capturing a trace of what's going on over the wire over time. I can specify how long I want it or my sample rate. I can interrupt it at different times. And now if I zoom out, if all has gone well, we will see that I have regular pulses of data on my lines. Now you can't tell much by looking at just one of these pulses, but now watch what happens as I zoom in. So I can zoom in, I'm at the millisecond range, this branch is 20 millis or 10 milliseconds, and I can zoom in, and I can zoom in, and now I'm in microseconds, and now we're seeing the actual data on the line. So this is my clock line, here's my nice regular clocks. Notice how each width is about uh, uh, five microseconds, giving us about a hundred uh, kilohertz, which is the signal rate that I said that I wanted my on my I squared C, and here's my data line. So now we can look at the actual data which is moving to and fro on the ESP32 signal lines. Well, that's great, but uh, I mean we can still even do better than this. Many software analyzers have the capability to understand 
protocols. So I select here my I squared C protocol. I say channel zero is going to be, or rather the SDA is on channel one, the data is in channel one, and the clock is on channel zero. Hit the save button and switch this to hexadecimal. And now we see the decoded signals. So this is the clock line up here, and we're seeing here the messages being sent to and received from the partner device. And of course, I can move along, I can scroll down, I can zoom in and see another signal. I can uh, scroll down and see where in, this, in the trace the signal begins and all kinds of other wonderful goodies. Now, of course, I'm only scratching the surface of the capability of the logic analyzer here. Uh, I can save these traces. I can put marks in my traces. Uh, I can compare two traces together. Um, uh, the different protocols I've got available, although I primarily use I squared C and SPI, but I've got UART as well, and a whole variety of different protocols, including the ability to define my own protocols and add them into the environment. So we can uh, have complicated IC, uh, ICs in our story and monitor the signals. So that's really the long and the short of it. I strongly, strongly recommend that you get yourself one of these logic analyzers. They're not expensive. Get one of the different software packages available to understand the data coming out of these. Uh, plug it into your ESP32. Examine the data which is being passed and this will save your bacon if you find that uh, an electronics project you're working on isn't working as it should. By plugging in signal analyzers into your GPIO pins, you can readily and quickly look for problems in your data, which you're never going to see just by looking at your physical circuits or your software. Uh, more times than I can mention, I have attached a signal analyzer to my solution and done a head slap to realize that I had wires reversed because I'm now looking at the data showing that uh, I'm not going to have I'm not having the data that I expect or my timings are out or I'm not getting a response back from an I squared C device when I expected I should I'm looking at my ESP32 scratching my head what's going wrong you plug in a signal analyzer and you can see that the data is either flowing or not flowing and it's flowing correctly and you can see it in binary and hex and decimal. Okay, that's uh, really all I wanted to show. So thanks again. I, I look forward to making more of these videos in the future. Thanks again. Bye for now.